And then, number nine, don't keep too many options open too long. Hmm? Nowadays, the movement having expanded within the last 25 years, there are so many options open within the movement, at, at least for some people, eh? at least for those who don't have responsibilities of a different kind. Eh? And the temptation therefore is that we keep hoping that something better will turn up. Maybe we're invited to join the team of a certain centre. So we think, well, it wouldn't be a bad thing to do, but then that centre is situated in an industrial town. They don't want to live in an industrial town. Let me wait and see if, you know, I get an offer from a centre, well, situated in a very pleasant, very agreeable sort of country town. <coughs> or preferably right in the country. Just let me wait and see, yeah? So you keep your option open. And um, maybe you do get such an invitation, and then you think, well, well, no, I re I'd really rather like to, to uh, you know, work in a centre which had a much better climate, you know. I really, well, maybe I need sunshine for the sake of a spiritual development. <laughs> so you, you put it aside, you know, you, 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 you don't, uh, you know, take up that particular option. You go on keeping your options open. You think that something better may, may, uh, may turn up. And of course, if you're keeping your options open, you don't have to decide anything, you don't have to commit yourself, and maybe you're a bit reluctant to do that. You know, maybe you, uh, well, you rather like sort of sitting on the fence. You, maybe you think even this rather noble sort of thing to do, to sit on the fence and keep all your options open, and just, you know, do nothing. I'm, I'm sure there's an appropriate spiritual rationalization for this sort of thing. Perhaps you've got a sort of mistaken idea of, you know, freedom and independence. You know, oh, I don't want to bind myself down by committing myself to this and committing myself to that. But one can only say in this connection that freedom is found in commitment. Eh? Hmm? It's not found in refraining from commitment. I'm talking about specific commitments, not the commitment represented by one's going for refuge. Commitment is, freedom is found in, in, in commitment. Because when you commit yourself, it's, it's your act, it's the act of your whole person, or as much as your whole person as you are able to, to, to muster. So you, freedom is to be found in making that commitment. Eh? Otherwise, if you don't make that sort of commitment, if you go on keeping your op options open indefinitely, well, you, you just stultify. Eh? Keeping your, your options open represents a process, we may say, simply of self-stultification. So you keep them open for a little while, if you've just left one particular situation which may have been demanding, don't keep your options open for too long, but yes, keep them open for some time. That's certainly quite valid and quite legitimate. Just look around to see what the options are, what you really want to do, what would be genuinely in the interest of your spiritual development to do, and in the interest of other people, in the interest of the movement. Consult your spiritual friends, and then commit yourself. Eh? And don't commit yourself just for a very short period, a very short time. Hmm? I, I, I think that the fact that we can move around so, so much and so easily these days means that people get a bit restless after a year or two and they want to move on, want to try some other scene. But I think you can't really achieve very much, anything really very substantial, unless you commit yourself to something for a relatively long time. Hmm? I'm thinking, in the case of a commitment to working in a centre, uh, to a period of, say, four or five years. Yeah.